Hello everybody, uh, this is Brother Luke, uh, Sin City Preacher. I think the uh, title for this uh, video will be uh, uh, Quiz to Test for Dogmatism. Uh, first let me say that uh, I remember very early in my life uh, I was warned that uh, never talk about politics or religion. Uh, I'm sure that many of you have heard that saying, because if people talk about politics and religion, uh, it's very likely for arguments to start, and sometimes they can be very heated and divisive. So let's avoid the discussing politics and religion. I think in many social settings that's probably advisable, uh, but uh, when we when we talk about religion or we talk about uh, uh, the Bible or specifically Christianity, uh, there are all kinds of opinions about all kinds of different subjects. And I've made numerous videos in the past uh, talking about how dogmatic some Christians are. Uh, basically, they, they will make a mountain out of a molehill they will make a minor issue into a major issue and then divide over it. And the, um, I guess the proof of this is the fact that there are so many so-called Christian denominations. Uh, before I made this video, I did a quick search. and There are different statistics. They say that there, there's at, at least 30 to 40,000 Christian denominations around the world. Now, why does a denomination come into being. It's because a, a group of people who uh, are in a fellowship, in a denomination, there's a division among them over a particular doctrine, and then they can't agree, and they can't just uh, agree to disagree, so therefore they separate and go, go separate ways, and they start a new denomination that that conforms to this specific, uh, you know, doctrine that they think is so important. So over and over again, people have divided their bodies, their their fellowship, and broken away into new uh, denominations. So it's it's really become uh, quite a wide, varied uh, mess. <laughs> and you've probably heard me say this before. As for me. I only require that people agree with a few core beliefs. You, to have fellowship with me, uh, you must agree that Jesus Christ is God Almighty. You must agree that uh, salvation is a free gift we receive from Jesus when we put our faith completely in Him. Faith in Jesus is the only requirement to receive eternal life. And you must agree that once we've received this eternal life from Jesus, that we can never lose it for any reason. Those three doctrines are my core beliefs. Um, I've called it a three-legged three stool. I rest on that. And if you want to have fellowship with me, then at least we must agree on that much. Now, there are probably dozens maybe more than a hundred other theological questions that we could uh, discuss, and you don't have to agree with me. Uh, but, <laughs> sadly, uh, many people do not give me the same grace and freedom, and uh, if we disagree, then all of a sudden it's a big deal to them, because they're dogmatists. They want to make uh, minor issues into major issues. But what I want to do today is I want to prove that um, you're not going to find anybody who agrees with you completely. In my entire life, I've never met anyone who agrees with me 100%. And conversely, uh, uh, I've never found anybody with whom I agree 100%. And over the years, uh, with some of my friends uh, on, a, on a theological question where we disagreed, we were able to have a civil conversation. Sometimes the conversation took several years. And, and then because we were uh, gracious to each other and allowed each other 
to have this freedom uh, of, of a different of opinion, but we're able to uh, discuss it in a mature way. One of us changed our minds and finally agreed. Sometimes, though, nobody's changed their mind. We still disagree, but we still have peace and fellowship. Uh, so, uh, on a few occasions, you know, people have persuaded me to change my mind on some of these topics. Now, if you've watched a lot of my videos, you, you know that uh, I have a type of video called a Q&A. Uh, over the years, many people have uh, sent me questions, and they're still doing it to this day. And when they send me a question about a theological topic, then I, uh, most of the time, I decide to answer it through a video response. Well, the problem with this is that if you dare to air your opinions publicly, you're, you're not going to be, uh, e even if it's a topic that's 50-50, you're going to have 50 of the people, 50 percent of the people disagree, and some of these people are hateful, so they, they end up hating me. Uh, some of the people think my answer was, was correct, and they love me, and they, they support the answer. So uh, the, be the best thing you can do is, if you, if you don't want to take this risk, is just keep your mouth shut, don't dare express your opinion on anything, and that's the safe route to take. But I'm not going to play that game because I will not succumb to the, the intimidation, the, the terrorism of these dogmatists who uh, want to uh, you know, cause division because they are so intolerant they cannot tolerate other opinions contrary to theirs. But the point I want to prove today is that you are not going to find anybody with, who agrees with you on everything. Now let's set aside these basic core beliefs first that I uh, stated. And let's talk about some other theological questions. I'm going to state these questions, and then I'd like for you to take notes and just make a note of how you fall on this particular question. And then when it's all done, uh, if you can find people to ask those questions, all the people you know, personally and on YouTube, see how they answer those questions. And you're going to find that no one will agree with you completely. Then my question is, what are you going to do? Are you going to call them names? <laughs> You're going to call them a heretic? You're going to say, oh, Brother Luke, what kind of gospel are you preaching? Uh, what, what kind of message is this? You know, you don't believe that uh, in, uh, in tongues or you think that it's okay for women to teach? Well, is that what you want to do? You're going to find that if you cannot tolerate other opinions in all these minor uh, issues, then you are going to be all alone because you're so dogmatic, you will not give grace to other believers and tolerate other opinions. So I think we'll prove that if you dare to take, these, uh, take this uh, quiz here. So my first question on the quiz is, uh, uh, how old is the earth. Do you believe the earth is uh, millions of years old? Or do you believe the earth is 7,000 years old? Now, how about dispensations? How many dispensations are there? Uh, do you believe there are seven dispensations or less? Do you believe there's uh, no dispensations? Do you believe that uh, the, uh, the message of salvation is uh, the same throughout all of history, never changed in the past, and never will change in the future? Do you, what do you believe a dispensation is? Do you, do you believe it's a different way of getting saved? Or do you think that it's a uh, dis dispensing of more knowledge of the truth? What about the rapture? Do you believe the the rapture already happened in the past, like a preterist? Do you believe that uh, the rapture is going to happen before the tribulation, or in the middle of the tribulation, or at the end of the tribulation? What about the millennium? Are, are you what's called an amillennial? You believe there's no such thing as a millennium? Are you a, um, a, a 
premillennialist, you believe Jesus will come return before the millennium and then he'll establish his millennium? Or do you believe in postmillennialism, that, that uh, the millennium is happening right now and Jesus will come back at the end of it? <laughs> what about repentance? What is repentance? How do you define repentance? Do you think that when the Bible says repent to, to Christians, it, it, it's referring to uh, uh, stop sinning, change your life, turn over a new leaf? Or do you think that repentance means to change your mind? Uh, and if you think it's change your mind, do you think it's change your mind about sin? Or do you think it's change your mind about Jesus being your savior? What about women? Uh, do you think that uh, uh, women are somehow uh, second-class Christians? That uh, they, they should not be allowed to teach at all? That they should keep their head covered? And if they have to keep their head covered, is it with some kind of head covering? Or is their hair sufficient covering? Do you believe they must keep their mouth shut and never speak in church? What about translations? Do you think that the King James Version is the only true translation? Do you, or do you think that other modern translations are, are also valid and, and uh, uh, helpful? Or do you believe that none of them are right, that you have to go study it in the Greek and the Hebrew? What about Calvin? Do you agree with Tulip? Are you a five-point Calvinist, or, or do you believe in only a couple of the, the uh, points of Calvinism? Or do you reject it entirely? What about tongues? Uh, have tongues ceased? Uh, how, do some people still legitimately speak tongues today? And, and is tongues required? Uh, if you don't speak in tongues, are you not really saved because there's no evidence of your salvation? What about water? Uh, does a person have to get baptized to get saved, water baptized? And if so, is sprinkling okay or must it be submerged? And uh, if, uh, if it's required to get saved, uh, then that's baptismal regeneration. It's not a faith, it's, it's uh, a work of baptism. And if, and if baptism is uh, not required to get saved, then should it be completely sponged and, and uh, no baptism should be permitted or is baptism uh, not a requirement but something that is advisable that is a, a uh, uh, ordinance that uh, that uh, we should do how do you see that what about the Godhead do you believe that there's one God do you believe there's three persons the Father the Son the Holy Ghost do you believe that this God uh, transforms himself into different modes from time to time? Or do you believe he simultaneously exists in three persons? Uh, what about hell? Is hell a literal um, fire being tormented and burned with fire forever and ever? Or is the fire figurative? Is it some other kind of torment? And does it last forever and ever and ever? Or does someone uh, is someone uh, uh, tormented and then and then they are annihilated, or are they just simply die and then they're annihilated? How do you see that? What does the word believe mean? Does believe mean surrender, uh, follow, serve, <laughs> or does it mean to have faith in, to trust? And, and as far as believing, what do you have to believe and how much do you have to believe? How much knowledge does a person have to have? Does a person have to, uh, is a person have to believe in Jesus Christ as their savior? Is that enough? Or, or do they have to know a lot more facts about him? And if that's the case, how much knowledge do they have to have? Do they have to know there's one God? Do they have to know that God exists in, uh, as a Godhead of three persons? Do they have to know that he became a man named Jesus? Do they have to know that he performed all these miracles? He turned water to, lime, to, to, to wine. He fed thousands 
Uh, he uh, healed the, the lame and the blind and the deaf. Do they have to have knowledge of all those things? Do they have to have knowledge about the cross and how that worked and it, the sins of the world are all paid for? Do they have to know about the resurrection? Do they have to know about the ascension? Do they have to know about the second coming? How many of the facts about Jesus are necessary for someone to be saved? What about works? What, what, what is the place for works for us? Do we have to do some kind of works to get saved? Do we have to do some kind of works to, to prove we're saved? Do we have to do some kind of works to uh, uh, keep our salvation? Uh, here's one for you. Do you believe that Earth is the only planet that has life? Could there be life on other planets? Could God be doing the same kind of thing elsewhere in the universe? So, I, uh, I've expressed my opinion on some of these questions over the years. You can find my answers to these in uh, uh, my videos. But I've dared to answer the questions. And because of that, I've put myself at risk. Because I know when you dare to answer a question that some people are going to agree and some people are going to disagree. And then when some people who disagree are just mean-spirited, dogmatic bigots that are not able to tolerate other opinions. So uh, I'm going to ask you to uh, stick your neck out there, answer the questions, and then compare your answers with other of these uh, these professing Christians and then see how much harmony you have among each other when you know the truth about each other and all these things. There's, these are only a few questions. Many more could be asked. But you're going to find out that the way you answer those questions, you're not going to find one person who agrees with you completely on everything. If you do, embrace them. I don't think in your whole life you'll ever find one. And, and what are you going to do with the people who disagree? Are you going to call them names and make videos about them and shun them and, and call them heretics? Or are you going to accept the fact that we can't agree on all these things and allow for disagreement and then cordially, with grace and kindness and love, continue to discuss these subjects and learn from each other? As for me, uh, I'm not going to, let's say, continue breaking into more more denominations because every time someone disagrees, we've got to go form a new denomination. Uh, sometimes the differences are clear distinctions. Sometimes the differences are just simply nuances. It's our vocabulary. It's the way we express ourselves. But I am going to tolerate other opinions. The only thing I will not tolerate is intolerance. If someone will not tolerate other opinions, then you can go to dogmatist hell, whatever that is, whether it's fire or not. All right, I'll be very interested in your comments. So um, bless you all in the name of our great Savior God. His name is Jesus Christ.